we have a faith that has so much to offer, the Catholic faith, the faith of the Church founded by our Lord Jesus Christ. As we discuss the glories, the mysteries, as well as questions and concerns about the Catholic Church, join us here in Voices of Faith. Pabalik po ulit sa Faith Watch Channel dito sa Voices of Faith. At ang pag-uusapan po natin ngayon ay isang napaka-importante spiritual, ito yung spiritual, uh, nagiging spiritual practice po ngayon, it's about the consecration, total consecration to the Blessed Virgin Mary. But, pero bago tayo dumating doon, pag-uusapan din natin yung isa sa mga famous so proponents nito na si St. Maximilian Kolbe o St. Maximilian Mary Kolbe na isang conventual Franciscan at siyang founder ng Militia Immaculata. And as our guest in this show, in this chapter of our show, I, I have here with us uh, si Fra Dominic Mary Lim, actually father, Father Dominic Mary Lim, you can also call him father, and because he's a priest, and he's a conventual Franciscan. I happen to have been present at his solemn profession as a conventual Franciscan noong May 31, 1998. So this year, 2023, he is actually celebrating the 20, 25th anniversary of his solemn profession as a conventual Franciscan. So without further ceremony, I would like to introduce to you Fra Dominic Mary Lim. Uh, good day, Father. Thank you for joining us in this show. Good day, Ave Maria. Uh, before we, ano lang, siguro in brief lang, ano po ba yung conventual Franciscans? Kasi ang kilala po ng mga karamihan sa ating mga Pilipino na Franciscans ay yung naka-brown. At yung medyo maikli yung, ano, yung hood no? uh, and of course and siguro the most the most famous franciscans in the philippines are fictional ano sila padre salvi at padre damas na, na palagi pinapakitang naka brown so ano po ba yung conventual franciscans at bakit po gray ang inyong habit okay. let me start by saying na uh, in the time of st francis uh, isa lang yung final niya which is called the brothers and sisters of penitence no? mm-hmm. So, hindi pa siya tinatawag na OFM or Order of Friars Minor mm-hmm. kung hindi ang pangalan niya talaga is uh, Brothers and Sisters of Penitence. No? Uh, it is because uh, highlighted yung penance sa life ni St. Francis. Uh, dahil nga ang kulay ng penance ay, ay gray because of the ash na ginagamit natin sa Ash Wednesday. So we convention was uh, from the time of uh, uh, nang, na itinatag ito ni St. Francis hanggang sa ngayon, we continue to wear the gray. Medyo, medyo na bago lang noong time ng after ng uh, French Revolution nagkaroon din kami ng isa pang kulay which is black mm-hmm. at uh, meron pa sa mga yu sa Europe ngayon meron pa rin nagbe-wear ng black and it is because uh, you know naman na uh, ang conventions is known also for taking care taking good care of of a lot of the churches na simbahan so maraming simbahan na importante na binigay sa pangangalaga namin, mga conventuals. Uh, one of which I would say is the Church of Santa Croce, no? yung kung saan nakalibing si Michelangelo, at uh, then um, the Church of uh, Santi Apostoli, no? yung uh, where, where you house namin yung dalawang saints, si Saint uh, Philip and James. No? Mm-hmm. At marami pang na, pa, mga, mga importanteng simbahan na pinangalaga sa amin, sa amin ng simbahan. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, ang mata ni Napoleon Bonaparte noong uh, gusto niyang kuhanin lahat ng mga properties ng simbahan ay marami nasa amin. Mm-hmm. So, kaya kami yung talagang su- suffered a lot from the French Revolution na, na dispersed yung mga friars or uh, kinumpiscate yung mga properties. So, kami talaga yung apektado mostly ng French Revolution. At uh, dahil dito, uh, para to save the order ang ginawa ng mga friars, they change from gray to black because the black is the color of the diocesan priests. Mm-hmm. Tapos pinahaba nila ng kaunpas kaunti pa, mas pinahaba pa nila yung kapyuch namin. So it would cover yung, yung, uh, yung cord. So hindi masyado makita yung cord. So at, at the back, parang, parang diocesan ang tingin sa amin. Hindi kami uh, recognize kaagad 
as the conventional Franciscans, no? Mm-hmm. So that was the time na na, na save din yung order because of of the uh, change of color and change of a little bit of uh, of the uh, style ng aming uh, ng aming uh, habit, no? Mm-hmm. Pero lately binalik na naman yo kaya nga binabalik namin yung original kaya nga ang uh, uh, yung gray as ma- yung mga nag-black ay 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 medyo marami na sa kanila ay bumalik sa gray mm-hmm. at saka yung kahit yung cut uh, we we are using now the cut that was uh, proposed by uh, Saint Bonaventure when he was still the general of the order so iyon ang dahilan kung bakit kami ay naka-gray mm-hmm. pero yung uh, conventional ano ba yung conventional ito yung ito yung isa sa mga tatlo na napapabilang sa first order. Yung Franciscans kasi, mayroong first order, second order, at saka third order. Mm-hmm. Yung first order ay, ito nga, kami ng tatlo, the uh, order of Friars Minor, na originally of the Leonine Union, kasi sila yung mali- lahat ng grupo, pati yung mga malilita grupo, at kasamang observance, pinagsama-sama ni Leo XIII, kaya tinawag silang Order of the Friars Minor of the Leonine Union. Mm-hmm. But they don't want to, to use that Leonine Union. So ngayon, uh, they are known to be the OFM. Mm-hmm. At uh, kami naman, kami yung mga conventuals, who are also already uh, distinct, uh, even during the time of Francis, ay uh, distinct na kasapagkat ang, uh, kami yung uh, malalaking uh, communities na nakatira sa mga convents. Uh, so, Kaya conventual. Or, that's right. Oo, mm-hmm. Kasi nga, from the word convenire, meaning coming together, mm-hmm. so kami yung sa lahat, kami yung mas contemplative, no? in a way. Because we are contemplative, but no, not totally contemplative, we are contemplative active. And then, uh, yung namang Capuchins, ay yung, ito yung mga sinusunod nila yung rule of hermitage ni St. Francis. No? Rule of the hermitage. So, ito yung sa first order, second order, yung mga uh, mga poor clare, Urbanis at saka Claris, uh, dalawa lang yung uh, poor clare na, na sa second order. At then, uh, yung sa pangatlo naman ay yung uh, third order, merong regular at saka secular. Mm-hmm. Yung third order, secular, ito yung mga lay people na gustong sundin pa rin yung spirit ni St. Francis. They could still be Franciscans at the same time, eh, maintain yung kanilang buhay bilang laiko. No? At ito namang uh, na, uh, regular, ito naman yung mga congregations, male and female founded after St. Francis. Hindi na sila founded ni St. Francis but they do share the spirituality and in St. Francis, they still follow uh, the uh, spirituality of St. Francis. So they are called uh, third order uh, regular. No? Both, uh, sa, lalo na sa mga male congregations uh, like the Amigonians, etc. Et Those are founded after St. Francis. So uh, ito yung his, medyo short history mm-hmm. ng mga conventual, conventuals at uh, mga Franciscans na iisa lang. Then 1517 ay totally humiwalay na sa amin yung mga observants. After nine years, I kumiwalay sa kanila yung Capuchin, and we took care of the Capuchin for more than 90 years because they are not yet recognized by the church. They don't have an, uh, their own general. So ang general namin, yun ang kanilang general. We took care of the Capuchins for more than 90 years. Then finally, na-recognize na sila, and then they uh, they became you know, a, a separate entity uh, officially. At uh, yun ang uh, very short history at uh, afterwards, nagkaroon pa ng maraming division mm-hmm. ang mga Franciscans. Uh, then, it, pinagsama-sama ni Leo XIII uh, in the late 18th century, 1800s. Uh, pinagsama-sama uli sila, kaya ito yung tinatawag natin OFM ngayon. I so, I, I hope, medyo, uh, I try to concise everything para, mm-hmm. kasi kung tayo, eh, usapan natin yung history namin, <laughs> oh. na, na, matagal. <laughs> Oo, oh, matagal. Again. Pero, uh, thank you for uh, for uh, for introducing yung history ng Franciscans, kung sino ba yung Franciscans, the first order, the second order, and the third order, as well as yung conventuals and observance. Kasi for a lot of us Filipinos, it's just Franciscans, no? Basta, ano, uh, I remember nga, I was once in, ano, I was, uh, I was once in a church where there were many conventual Franciscans. Nakita sila nung bishop. Na, sabi nung bishop sa kala, my fellow uh, uh, to our friendly Capuchins. Gano tinawag na Capuchins yung <laughs> conventual. So, no? so, anyway, so in the conventual Franciscan tradition, napakalaki nung role ni St. 
Maximilian Mary Kolben, a Franciscan conventual priest or conventional Franciscan Polish priest born in 1891, if I'm not mistaken, 1891 and died in Auschwitz in 1942 and then canonized by, beatified by Pope Paul VI as a confessor. Ibig sabihin, someone na dineclare na blessed because of the holiness of his life and then canonized by Pope St. John Paul II as a martyr kasi yung in recognition of his uh, act of selflessness his, of charity in dying in 1942 so we can talk about talk about that a bit later uh, so napaka unique you know, para a saint who is both a confessor and a martyr kasi usually one of the or one or the other lang eh. and uh, can you mention ano yung role ni saint maximilian merkel sa conventual franciscans at ano ba yung tinatag niyang militia immaculata of which you are a spiritual assistant Okay, ito yun. Um, uh, let me start by doon sa departure ng sinabi ko kanina na persecuted kami na sa French Revolution. Mm-hmm. So, by that time na nang bago pumasok si St. Maximilian sa order, ay napaka-kaunti na namin. No? Uh, because persecuted na kami. So, mga, I would say may mga uh, uh, less than 800 friars all over the world. So, ganun kami, kumunti kami ng gusto talaga. Apektado kami ng French Revolution. But then, St. Maximilian uh, re- uh, rejuvenated the order. Um, at sabi niya nga, ang, ang uh, susi sa paglago ay ang, ang, uh, ang mahal na ina. Ito yung tinatawag niya na Philodoro, o yung the golden thread. Na sabi niya, mula pa sa St. Francis, ay uh, the Our Lady has been working already for the order. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, ando na ang mahal na ina, uh, mula kay St. Francis hanggang sa time ni Maximilian, ni-recognize niya na yung thread na yon the golden thread, uh, yung, uh, uh, the golden thread ay hindi na putol, parating na doon. And yun nga, cited yung mga Franciscan scholars, Franciscan who defended ma- a lot of uh, teaching about Mary not, and devotion also about Mary. So, makikita mo yan na parating mayroon. Uh, na, na devotion and uh, teaching about our Blessed Mother. Yeah. So, ayong time niya, uh, napadami niya ang, uh, ano, ang um, friars. In fact, yung pinakamalaking uh, friary sa Guinness Book of World Records ay yung friary ni St. Maximilian. Mm. More than 800 friars in just one friary. This, so, was, nga, this was in Poland. In Poland, in Poland. Poland. Or the, or the city of the Immaculate. In fact, uh, yung ano niya, yung hindi magkasya sila sa uh, sa simbahan, kaya nagte-take turn sila. Pagkatapos na magdasal ng isang grupo, papasok na naman yung isang grupo, at ganun din sa refectory, sa pagkainan, no? sa sa uh, dining hall. Hindi rin kasi sila magkasya, so papasok yung isa, lalabas yung isa. So, yung uh, uh, si St. Maximilian, nung siya ay seminarian pa, he had this uh, uh, this inspiration to found the uh, militia of the Immaculata. Is uh, kasama ng mga ibang mga mga seminarians from different jurisdictions ay itinatag niya uh, nila itong militia of the Immaculata in response doon sa uh, sa mga um, sa mga Mason, no? Kasi nung time niya, uh, napakalakas sa mga Mason at saka nagrarally sila in front of the Vatican and was saying na sisirain talaga nila ang simbahan. So si Maximilian, knowing that Our Lady is the defender of the church, tsaka siya yung the one who crushed the uh, head of the serpent, so the, pinawad niya itong um, uh, militia of the Mapulata na ang, ang goal ay, ay um, to consecrate as many as we can. No? Sapagkat sa kanyang, uh, kanyang belief ay, ay the, pagka na, maraming 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 na na-consecrate, almost all na, na sa buong mundo ay na-consecrate, ay doon na ang triumph ng Immaculate Heart of Mary. Mm. That is the signal of the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Yung word na militia, kasi ano yan eh, di ba? Uh, usually, pag ginagamit yung word na militia, we think of parang mga citizen army o yung mga arm, mm-hmm. uh, yung ordinary mamayan who bear arms no, to fight siguro in a war, no, to defend their country. Pero yung militia Immaculata, is it also an army in a way? Yes, it is a spiritual army. In fact, yun ang idea ni Maximilian, we have to fight a spiritual fight. No? Because uh, sabi niya nga, lumalakas ang forces ng evil, we have to uh, join hands all together with the Immaculata because she, she was the one leading us and 
na sabi niya that the only way na tayo ay mananalo sa laban ay kailangan natin i-consecrate yung sarili natin sa mahal na ina. I see. So yung consecration to the Blessed Virgin Mary, ano po ba ibig sabihin talaga nito? Kasi medyo madalas na natin gamitin yung term ng consecration no? to the Blessed Virgin Mary. We hear about consecrations to Mary, total consecration to Mary, may consecration to the Immaculate Heart, may pang consecration na na attached sa miraculous medal parang ang dami daming consecration tapos hindi lang persons so meron din consecration sa of countries no like ang Pilipinas every year kino consecrate pag feast of the immaculate concept pag, pag feast of the immaculate conception merong consecration supposedly binabasa sa lahat ng simbahan and then pag feast of the immaculate heart meron din consecration so actually of philippines twice a year kino consecrate tapos minsan may mga special consecrations pa of the whole country by the entire bishops by the entire bishops conference uh, i don't think we have the time to discuss all of the matters pero in a, in a nutshell what is consecration at ano yung pinagkaiba ng consecration na tinuturo ni saint maximilian mary kobe um From the word cons- consecration, no, uh, ang sinasabi ng simbahan, when a thing, for example, is consecrated, uh, uh, from the uh, sila separate siya for a specific purpose. For example, uh, yung mga chalice, consecrated yun. No? Uh, yung chalice na yun, consecrated. Pag consecrated ang chalice, ibig sabihin, hindi siya maaaring gamitin sa ibang uh, sa ibang pamamaraan. I- i- intended lang siya para sa liturgy. or sa celebration ng Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Um, kapag ka ang simbahan ay consecrated and dedicated, uh, supposed to be hindi dapat siyang gamitin sa ibang mga mga activities. No? Like for example, minsan nakakalungkot, nakakakita tayo ng mga simbahan na doon nag-concert, nag, 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 uh, nag, uh, okay lang sana kung religious ang, ano, ang uh, songs. Sometimes hindi religious ang songs. And that should not be... Uh, kapag ang simbahan ay consecrated. Kasi ibig sabihin, pag consecrated na simbahan, for that sole purpose lang siya dapat gamitin. So in a, in a way, yung consecration natin, bilang uh, ang pinakaunang consecration natin, of course, is baptism. Mm-hmm. Ibig sabihin, we belong to God. We are property of God. In property in a positive sense, not in a negative sense. Uh, meaning God would take care of us. God uh, God would not abandon us in that sense that we are we are property of God. At yun ang ano no, yun ang na, 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 ang nakakalungkot kasi nga uh, uh, yun uh, hindi minsan nas, nasusunod yung na uh, supposed to be what is uh, consecrated. So yun ang uh, basic idea ng consecration. Nang ililalagay natin ang buong sarili natin uh, kay Maximilian total consecration buong buong sarili natin pag-iisip, uh, kaluluwa, uh, lahat lahat ng bagay sa atin ay ini, ini, ini binibigay natin sa kamay ng mahal na ina para siya ang gumalaw sa atin, no? Ang pagkakaiba ng consecration ni uh, uh, Saint uh, Louis Maria Grignon de Montfort ay oh. yung pag- paggamit niya ng salitang slave, no? to become a slave of our lady. Uh, kay Saint Maximilian, may development na, no? Sabi niya, yung slave kahit na siya ay sumusunod sa kanyang uh, owner, pero meron pa rin siyang sariling pag-iisip. Mm. Okay. Kaya ang ginamit ni Saint Maximilian, uh, an instrument in the hands of our, of our lady. Uh, kung titingnan mo ano ba yung ginagamit normally sa hand? Uh, kaya ang isang isang mga Uh, image na binibigay ng namin ay yung pen. Yung, uh, kapag ka meron kang pen in your hand, mm-hmm. gagalaw lang yung pen o marirealize na ng pen yung kanyang uh, vocation which is to be able to write kung siya ay nasa kamay ng mahal na, ng gumagamit sa kanya. So, yun ang idea ni Maximilian na when we give ourselves to Our Lady, totally, wala walang reservation. Walang reservation sa atin Uh, totally binibigay natin yung sarili niya natin sa kanya para uh, he could dispose us, uh, she could dispose us uh, to, to sa perfection na kung dapat kung ano talaga yung vocation natin bilang Kristiyano. Because she who, uh, who followed Jesus, the first disciple and also the perfect disciple of Christ, she could lead us to uh, become also a disciple of Christ. Mm-hmm. So, Napakaganda po nung, ano, nung, nung nabanggit niyo na about Mary leading us to become disciples of Christ. Pero siguro isang tanong ngayon ng iba dyan is, bakit kailangan pang dumaan kay Mama Mary? Hindi mo pwedeng i-consecrate natin sarili natin kay Jesus. 
For example, mm. consecrate to the to the Sacred Heart. Ganon, no? Bakit kailangan pang mag-consecrate kay Blessed Virgin, Mary? Yeah. Oh, maganda. Very interesting yung question niya kasi yan ang parating binabato sa atin. No? Bakit mm. nga kailangan mag-consecrate tayo sa ating mahal na ina? Siguro, ang unang-una, lahat naman ng mga uh, privileges and work ni Mary ay nag-stem doon sa kanyang title na Theotokos, Mother of God. At dahil siya ay Theotokos, siya ay pinabanal ng Diyos at pinreserve from original sin, Magali Conception. No? At dahil dito, uh, sa kanyang preservation na ito, yung kanyang holiness, which ang tinatawag ng mga Eastern Church na Panagia, uh, yung kanyang holiness is not only for herself, but also for others. So, sa pagdating ni Kristo dito sa mundo o ang pagdating ng Panginoon o ng, kahit ang biyaya ng presensya ng Panginoon ay dumaan kay Maria. So, uh, it, it is through her that we are able to see, to touch, to um, to listen to uh, uh, ang, uh, si Kristo. Yung Diyos na hindi nakikita in the Old Testament was uh, we were we are able to see na nakita pinakita ng Panginoon kung sino ang Ama. The unseen God is made visible uh, in, in in Jesus through Mary. So lahat ng mga bagay kung titingnan mo kahit ng mga sakramento natin is uh, kailangan may mga tangible sign. Human as we are, we need something tangible to be able to connect with the with the spirit, the word of the spirit. And so kaya ito ang dahilan kung bakit ang sakramento natin lahat ay mayroong matter and form. No? At itong ma- yung matter na ito ay para sa atin dahil we need something tangible, concrete, para tayo ay makipag- makakonek sa world of the spirit. Mm-hmm. And God knows that. And that is the very essence ng incarnation. God showed us who the Father is. No? And uh, itong mano na ito, itong way ng Panginoon na ito, ay ginawa niya through Mary. So, uh, kung, uh, when Jesus ascended into heaven, hindi niya iniwan yung katawang lupa niya. Oh, dala-dala niya sa langit. Ibig yung sabihin, assumption. part of humanity, even assumption, even ascension, no? part of the, of the human body, uh, the humanity, in, in, in that sense, part of humanity already entered heaven. Mm-hmm. So, meron ng uh, peace ng, ng mystical body ni Christ na nandun na sa langit. Yung mahalay na, at saka ang ating mang- Panginoon. So, it is as if telling us that uh, the body, the physical body of Jesus is already there. Mm-hmm. And so the mystical body would follow. And in fact, Mary, by uh, uh, by her assumption into heaven, had proved that or, or uh, confirmed that na tayo din ay, uh, ida, ay sasama katulad niya. So when Jesus, when Jesus uh, weds divinity to his humanity, wala nang, uh, wala nang separation. Mm-hmm. Hindi na maaring i-separate pa yung kanyang pagkadiyos at yan yung pagkatao. So whenever God mediates now to the Father, He always mediates through that body that came from Blessed Mother. Blessed Mother. Mm-hmm. And so, this is, uh, pwedeng sigurong ibang way, but God wants it that way. That everything, pass, not only, uh, not only that everything passes through Mary, yung lahat ng grasya ay pumupunta sa atin sa pamagitan ni Maria, kung hindi, pumapanik din sa Diyos Uh, sa pamamagitan ni Maria. Pamamagitan ni Maria. Ayon. Pero yung pamamagitan ni Maria na yon ay always uh, in connection with the, the soul mediator who is Christ. So hindi na, hindi na in fact, uh, yun nga ang paganda dito. Kasi yung mediation ni Christ is made more uh, visible and made more um, uh, meaningful dahil sa, dahil sa uh, kasama niya doon sa mediation na doon sa Maria. So it does not uh, it does not uh, blur or cloud the mediation of Christ but it makes more um, beautiful or mas mas claro yung mediation ni Cristo. In fact, di ba sabi natin no uh, uh, sabi ni Maria sa kanyang magnificat my soul magnifies the Lord. So everything uh, ang ginagawa ni Maria ay pinapalinaw ang Panginoon. Pinapalinaw si Kristo, pinapalinaw ang Espiritu Santo, pinapalinaw ang Diyos sa mga I see. So, ang, nasa, ang naalala ko tuloy yung sinabi sa, ano, sinabi sa Gospel of John, di ba, yung doon sa wedding at Cana, 
yung sabi nga eh, the last words of, of the Blessed Virgin Mary that are actually written in the Gospels was there at the beginning of the ministry of, of our Lord, of her son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Eh, sabi niya dun sa, dun sa, the, ano, dun sa namamahala, di ba, nung, ano, nung, nung mga, nung, nung water, sabi niya, do whatever he, no, Christ tells you. And, And that's precisely what the Blessed Virgin Mary does for us. It's it's it's, it's he, she brings us closer to Christ. She wants us to do the will of Christ, hindi yung to do her will, which is different from the will of God. Because that's not possible. Mary is already so uh, intimately united to the to the to God, to, yeah. to God. But we'll 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 get uh, we'll get into that a bit later. No? But so but the point is. Walang ano, wala tayong fear that the Blessed Virgin Mary will ever lead us to do anything that's against the will of God. So now we've spoken about yung consecration, tapos ngayon yung unity ni Blessed Virgin Mary, ni Mama Mary sa ating Panginoon. May nabanggit si St. Maximilian Mary Kolbe, no? Bago, just before he was arrested, about two hours before he was arrested in 1940s. One, I think 1941, 1942. But two hours before he was arrested, he wrote something. Na inexplain niya yung sinabi ni Mama Mary sa Lords na I am the Immaculate Conception. Kasi nung apparition sa Lords, hindi niya sinabi na I am immaculately conceived. Sinabi as I am the Immaculate Conception. So uh, we just have a few minutes left, Father. Unfortunately, no, because to maandar yung palo. Pero in brief, ano yung ibig sabihin nung I am the Immaculate Conception. But nga ba tinawag ni Mama Mary sa sarili niya na as I am the Immaculate Conception? Let me put it in this way. Uh, Lumen Gentium Chapter 8, uh, which is uh, the document of Mati Constitution, Lumen Gentium is dedicated, Chapter 8 is dedicated to our Blessed Mother mm-hmm. and has two sections. No? First is that the relationship of Mary to Jesus and the second one is the relationship of Mary to the Church. So the vocation to uh, divine motherhood and the vocation of spiritual motherhood to the mystical body of Christ. Mm-hmm. So from that, the uh, mystical body of Christ, the uh, uh, motherhood, I don't, don't that it titing na yung uh, yung uh, ano ni Maximilian na immaculate conception. No? Kasi sabi niya nga, when Mary appeared at the uh, at Lourdes, hindi nung tinanong siya ng pangalan niya, hindi niya sinabing I uh, hindi niya sinabing I am immaculately conceived. Mm-hmm. Ang sabi niya, I am the Immaculate Conception, telling that that is the meaning of her name. no? The meaning of her name, which also confirms the words of the angel uh, at, uh, uh, at the Annunciation when uh, it says, Hail, full of grace. There's no name of Mary. Hail, full of grace. So, Kaire, Kekaretumine. And, and that is in the present tense, present perfect tense. Na ibig sabihin, it is only recognized by the angel na siya ay full of grace. Hindi sinasabing she was made full of grace during that time, but uh, the angel recognized only that she was already full of grace and will continue to be full of grace and will always be full of grace. Mm-hmm. So, uh, with that, uh, kaya nga, kailangan dumaan muna, duman, uh, as, as immaculately uh, con- conceived, ay dumaan sa kanya si Kristo, pero dahil dadaan din tayo sa kanya, uh, tsaka ang paglilinis na walang sana. Ang, ang tawag ni Maximilian sa Holy Spirit ay uncreated immaculate conception. Mm-hmm. Sa pagkat tayo ay pinanganak o ay nililikha sa pamagitan ng Espiritu Santo na hindi nilikha. So uncreated immaculate conception. Ba- ba- Holy, Spirit, Spirit. Holy, Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Holy Spirit is the uncreated immaculate conception. While Mary uh, uh, ay tinawag niya naman na created immaculate conception. Um, dahil creature si Mary, uh, pero dahil tayo ay dadaan din sa kanya o oh, bilang mga anak niya, so tayo ay uh, uh, bilang spiritual mother natin si Mama Mary na simbahan, kaya kailangan tayong dumaan sa kanya upang malinis din. So, uh, uh, related din doon sa graces that comes from, uh, uh, passes through her. No? Every grace passes through her. So that is the reason why she was created, as uh, she was called the created Immaculate Conception and vis-a-vis Uh, doon sa uh, uh, Holy Spirit na sinatawag na uncreated immaculate conception. So, 
Tanong ko na ha, sinummarize mo na lang na ano, uh, okay. kasi nga sabi mo wala na tayong time. <laughs> siguro, siguro na lang, no? the last, uh, last three minutes siguro. Uh, two things. Uh, ano, yung, uh, acti- ano yung activities ng Militia Immaculata ngayon? And how can people contact it? Number one. Number two, what's an easy way for people to embark on consecrating themselves to the Blessed Virgin Mary? Siguro very practical na. Uh, first is that uh, ang consecration, ang, ang pagiging member ng, ima, ng militia of the Immaculata is uh, hindi hindi um, hindi competition sa ibang mga groups. Mm-hmm. Kasi uh, any groups wherever you are would enhance, no? Will be enhanced because of the of, of uh, being a member of the militia of the Immaculata. Kasi meron tayong MI1, MI2, and MI3. Le- three levels. MI1, mm-hmm. yun lang yung consecrated kay Mama Mary pero wala wala silang panahon. Uh, so they they would just be living their consecrated great consecration privately in their lives. Mm-hmm. The second MI2, yung may mga panahon sila to gather to uh, to make uh, activities. Ito yung mga lay people na uh, they still have uh, some time to offer to para ipromote din ang ang uh, cons- consecration and devotion to our lady. At tapos yung MI3, ito na yung totally ang kanilang buhay ay dedicated for the uh, for this purpose yung uh, para may promote ang uh, consecration at saka para ma-promote din ang devotion and and also uh, the knowledge of learning more about our blessed mother so um yun ang mga tatlong may, ano ng, uh, ng level ng members ng Militia of the Immaculata now uh, ang goal namin is to consecrate as much as we can no? uh, to uh, para madala namin sa mga na at maging very uh, meritorious lahat ng mga uh, ginagawa nila activities nila sa buhay ay maging meritorious uh, para din sa ating uh, uh, kasama sa redemption ng ating pagkakawa. At uh, uh, how do you, can they, uh, siguro ang pinakamadali ay, ay uh, ang means sa atin ngayon ay yung mass media. Mm-hmm. No, pinakamadali siguro ay meron kaming fa- Facebook account na uh, uh, MI International mm-hmm. o ay MI, MI Philippines Mm-hmm. So connected dito sa MI International or they could just uh, uh, contact yung St. Maximilian Seminary. Uh, may mga juniors kami dito who direct, direct them uh, to the Militia of the Immaculata. St. Maximilian so, Mary Kobe Seminary is there in multinational village. In that's, right, that's right. Okay. And so, so meron din kami FB, FB account. FB account ayon meron din. So may Facebook page ang ano mm-hmm. ang Militia Immaculata Philippines and if you're interested you can contact them to know more about uh, consecration. Pero siguro one ano so we still have mga uh, one minute. Sure. Uh, in, very, in very brief if people just want to begin consecrating themselves to the Blessed Virgin Mary right away what should they do? First is that to pray over it to prepare themselves no by uh, um, by confession uh, um, so that they are uh, they will be enlightened by the holy spirit and uh, uh para prepared sila when it comes to uh the preparation for the uh, consecration to the immaculate mm-hmm. i see so thank you very much for your time uh, father dominic mary lim and so ngayon natatapos na naman ang isang kabanata nitong voices of faith thank you for joining us and for listening to us goodbye